Let's take you live to the briefing now. Good morning, all the attendants from across the board. And thank you for that response as usual. To actually have a conversation with us post cabinet meeting. The issues that came out of the cabinet meeting reads as follows. On the disaster management after the floods, cabinet expressed condolences to all people who have lost their loved ones in the recent devastation floods that hit several parts of the country, particularly Wazulu Natal. The declaration of national state of disaster and socioeconomic relief interventions recently announced by the President Sir Ramaphosa sought to ensure an effective and coordinated response across all spheres of government through the National Disaster Management Center. The one billion made available by the government is being used to support relief and recovery efforts, restore basic services, and provide humanitarian assistance in the form of food, water, shelter, sanitation, and clothing. The process to rebuild affected areas has already started as the people of our country unite in their determination to assist those who have lost their homes and possessions. On the coronavirus, cabinet, with cabinet noted with concern the recent spike in the COVID-19 infections in some parts of the country and urged all people to take precautionary measures to protect themselves against the deadly virus, especially during winter. The virus is still a constant threat and vaccination remains the most effective weapon to protect ourselves. The cabinet is pleased that more people continue to choose vaccination as their first line of defense against COVID-19 after recent statistics show that we have reached the milestone of over 50% of adult vaccination in five provinces. Cabinet calls on those who have not yet been vaccinated to do so to protect themselves and their loved ones. We should also continue to adhere to, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, to all COVID-19 prevention protocols, including the wearing of a mask that covers both the nose and mouth, washing hands with water and soap, or using a 70% alcohol-based hand sanitizer and keeping a safe social, social distance of at least one meter. On the social relief of distress, which is SRT commonly called, referred to, cabinet encouraged citizens receiving the 350 SRT grant to reapply following the introduction of a new regulations governing application and eligibility for the grant. Application can be lodged on the South African Social Security Agency. As a website, uh, the, the application system opened on 23rd, April, 2022, and is fully digital process to enable quick turnaround times. The relief grant is an important safety net for needy families who would otherwise be devastated by the scourge of poverty and unemployment. Government is committed to provide social assistance to the most vulnerable so that they can meet their basic needs. Safety and security. Cabinet continues to condemn the senseless killing of women and has welcomed the swift response by law enforcement officers in arresting suspects in connection with the death of Ms. Hilary Gadi of Kamakoku in Bumalanga. Cabinet further condemned the killing of six people in Kailicha, Cape Town. These senseless murders are a reminder that. We must do more as a society to end violence and gender-based violence and femicide. Mm -hmm. Cabinet urged all people in the country to work, <laughs> to work with the government in the fight against crime on GBVF. Together we can ensure that our communities and streets are safer for all, 
including the elderly women and children. In the economic area, cabinet welcomed the official opening of Coro Brick, Quastina Brick Manufacturing Factory at Driffontaine in Gauteng by President, Ramo, President Ramaphosa on Wednesday, 4 May 2022. The state of the art factory forms part of an 800 million investment, which goes hand in hand with a further 200 million earmark to expand corporate concrete operations in Wazulu Natal. Corobrick is one of several local businesses that have responded to President Ramaphosa's call on South African and international enterprises to invest in this country. Cabinet noted that fledging hydrogen economy has been given a boost with the launch of a hydrogen power truck by Anglo-American. The truck which was covered from diesel, which was converted from diesel to hydrogen and is powered in part by lithium ion batteries is a world first. The hydrogen economy has been identified as a strategic priority for our country's green economy and to drive economic growth and employment. Cabinet also welcomed the further investment into our economy by an Irish food company, the Kerry Group, which has opened a new 650 million plant in Hammersdale, Guazul Natal, aimed at producing sustainable food for the, for the continent. The plant is unique as it boasts numerous sustainability, sustainability features, including low energy usage equipment, solar power generation to reduce consumption from the local grid, waste, heat capture, and efficient water reuse and reduction. The Kerry Group has had a presence in South Africa since 2011, and their further investment is a sign that South Africa remains an investment destination of choice. These investments follow in the footsteps of the launch of the locally manufactured Isuzu, Isuzu DMAX Park in Kabeha in Eastern Cape last month. The new generation DMAX crowns Isuzu's commitment to South Africa and is one of the successes achieved under the Automotive Production Development Program. The ADBP is production's insensitive scheme for motor industry aimed at promoting production volumes in the specified motor vehicle industry, promoting added value in the automotive component industry, thus creating employment across the automotive value chain. Approximately 2.8 billion will be generated in local content production value through the lifestyle of ATPP, which is automotive industry. Investment will secure more than 1,000 direct jobs at, at, at the plant and indirectly employ 24,000 people, contributing significantly to community upliftment in the region. Regarding mining in Daba, the investing in South African mining in Daba 22 held at the Cape Town International Convention, Convention Center from 9 to 12 May 22 is one of the biggest platforms for engagement and collaboration between all stakeholders in the mining industry. The theme of the event was, open quote, evolution of Africa mining, investing in the energy transition, ESG and the economies, close quotes. Cabinet is confident that the mining endeavor will assist in showcasing and promoting South Africa as an investment destination of choice. South Africa welcomes investments into our country and is committed to creating favorable conditions for inclusive growth and transformation of the economy. Uh, on the international space and regional relations, cabinet also welcomed President Ramaphosa's recent interactions with President Joe Biden of the United States President Emmanuel Macron of France and President Haginde Hichilema of Zambia on different platforms. This engagement allowed the president to strengthen the parental relations and cooperation between South Africa and partner states on key regional and international issues, including finding a peaceful solution to the conflict in Ukraine. 
cabinet decisions. First one is on the budget votes. Cabinet calls on all citizens to follow the various budget votes by national government department and president so that they can hold government to account. During the budget vote, all departments give a detailed account of their plans and priorities for the year. Budget votes, ladies and gentlemen, seek to ensure that public funds are spent effect efficiently in meeting the needs of the public. They also provide the ideal platform for ministers to further unpack the work of government, including successes and challenges. On the area of liquefied petroleum gas, cabinet approved the LPG rollout strategy for implementation, which was published for public consultation in March 2022. The strategy seeks to expand the LPG industry in the country. The LPG will contribute meaningfully to the diversification of sources of energy. The strategy will, amongst others, will, amongst other, inter other interventions, regulate the pricing and the value chain and support the manufacturing of LPG cylinders in the country. It will also educate the public about the benefits of using LPG as an alternative form of energy. It will be accessible after it has been published by the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. On the National Strategic Framework on Disability Rights Awareness Raising Campaign for Persons with Disability, Cabinet approved the National Strategic Framework on Disability Rights Awareness Raising Campaign for Persons with Disability. The framework seeks to guide both private and public sectors in ensuring the rights of persons with disabilities are protected as enshrined in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa of 1996. The framework provides a toolkit that will assist in the removal of discriminatory barriers in decision-making, especially those related to persons with disability. It, also, it, is, it is also conscientious persons with disabilities to know their rights as protected by the Constitution. The framework also provides training, media reporting, and awareness raising within society on the rights of persons with disability. It gives effect to the white paper on the rights of persons with disabilities. South Africa is signatory to United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability and the United Nations Protocol to the African Charter on Human Rights and People's Rights on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. The framework was consulted with all relevant stakeholders, including the National Economic Development and Labor Council. On the Led Administration and Land Tenure Communal Area Summit, Cabinet approved the hosting of the Land Administration and Land Tenure in, community, in Communal Area Summit on Friday 27 and Saturday 28 May 2022 in Houghton. Cabinet adopted the position paper on Land Administration and Land Tenure in Communal Land Areas in March 2021. It directed that further consultation be undertaken with all relevant stakeholders. The summit will be the culmination of the work that was done in the past year, which solicited inputs from various stakeholders. When it get to the upcoming events, the fifth global conference on the eradication of child labor. South Africa will host the fifth global conference on the eradication of child labor at the Durban International Convention Center in Guazul Natal from Sunday 15 to Friday 20th, May 2022. It is the first time the International Labor Organization hosts this conference in Africa. Heads of state, 120, 120 ministers, tripartite constituents of 187 member countries of the ILO, UN, agencies, academic institutions, civil society organizations, non-governmental organizations, media and civil society are expected to attend the conference. The event will also allow South Africa to bring to the fore the country's constitution as it protects the right of children. 
the country will engage with the different countries that are ahead of us in eliminating child labor and learn from them. On the District Development Mundial Presidential Imbizo, the president will hold a, a, a District Development Model Presidential Imbizo in Pumalanga on Friday the 20th, May 2022, under the theme, Leave No One Behind. As an important public participation platform, the Imbizo allow the president to directly engage various stakeholders, especially rural communities, and to listen to their issues and challenges with the aim to address them. The DGM presidential MBSO aims to unlock blockages to integrated service delivery and promote public participation in line with DGM. South, African, so South Africans can follow and participate in discussions on social media under the hashtag has presidential MBSO. On the Africa Month, the commemoration of the annual Africa Month and Africa Day on Wednesday, 25th May, is being celebrated under the theme, open quote, the year of nutrition, strengthening resilience in nutrition and food security on the African continent, close quotes. As part of the long-term vision set out in Agenda 2063, which is Africa's development blueprint to achieve inclusive and sustainable social economic development over 50 years. The theme focuses on the potential of the people of Africa with an emphasis in women, adolescents, and children. This is key for development as it, deal, as it leads to improved lives of people, of individuals, higher earnings, and improved incomes for, the, for countries. A notable highlight in Africa Month celebration is Africa Communications Week which will be held at Constitutional Hill in Joburg from 23 to 27 May. After Africa Month, ladies and gentlemen, is an opportunity to promote African unity and deeper regional integration and to recommit Africa to common destiny. Cabinet reminds everyone that our national interests are intrinsically, are intrinsically linked to Africa's stability, unity, and prosperity. Special messages on condolences. Cabinet expressed condolences to the family and friends of Ms. Pindile Klawa, who had a long and illustrious career in the media industry, both in South Africa and abroad. She worked tirelessly for the betterment of our country. Ambassador, Ambassador Silungo Kuma Sokupa. 74 year old who served the state security agency in various capacities over his long and illustrious career in the public service. Pro Professor Francis Wilson, 83 years of age, an acclaimed economist and founder of Southern African Labor and Development Research Unit. In the area of appointments, the cabinet would congratulate the appointments of the following. Dr. Kessa Van Naidu as Deputy Director General, Institutional Development at the Department of Cooperative Governance. Mr. Siposile Emmanuel Tomoga as TDG Local Government Support in Intervention Management at DCOC. Mr. Rissima Patrick Tia as TDG Water and Sanitation Service Management at Department of Water and Sanitation. Mr. Colin Colan is one as TDG Regulation Compliance and Enforcement at the Water at the Water Department. Mr. Melanchthon Makube as TDG Social Governance Assurance and Performance at the Department of Public Enterprise, state-owned companies. Cabinet, uh, my apology. DDG State Owned Company Governance Assurance and Performance at the Department of Public Enterprise. My apology. Mm -hmm. Cabinet concurred with the ministers on the following appointments Mr. Beguise Matthews Kenisa as Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Joy Keladi Masemula as Chief Financial Officer of HDA, Dr. Cornelius Reiters as CEO of Lepile Northern Water. 
There is also a list of the members of the board there, which I'm not going to read. And thank you, DJ. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, I'm hoping Ishmael and Pelisha will assist me with the questions. Do we have any questions on the platform for the minister? Thank you, DG. Uh, so far, we have one question uh, from Kulekani Magubani uh, from Fin24. Minister, what is going to be done about the census and the Western Cape and the low response rate there? A census that can count the population is of little use. Minister and the Presidency, Modli Gugubele, speaking about uh, multiple issues there, including the fact that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa has been talking to the U.S. President Joe Biden and the French President Emmanuel Macron, as well as the Zambian President Hakainde Hichi Lema uh, on uh, different issues, including the Ukrainian-Russian situation, also talking about Africa Month there.